Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Charger Chat. I'm your host Josh and And I'm Danielle. And today on this Tuesday morning we have Preston joining us. So Preston, uh, why don't you get us started by telling us um, what is Olympia all about? Well, Olympia is a place where you can go find out about your state government and laws. It's, it's a lot of stuff that's down there. You could be here all day talking about Olympia. But if you really want to know what it's all about, where your state laws are made and where the RTWs change for different state laws. Okay. So um, what have you learned while you visit there? You I have learned quite a bit. With family being government, you can learn all day long. It's something that's never going to stop. If you want to learn something, you're going to get to learn it. I don't want to stop learning. I want to learn about everything. So Has your family influenced you going to this place? Yes, country? they have influenced me big, big time. I have an uncle who's down there who served 24 years, who's retired. And I have an aunt who did not serve in the state legislature, not in D.C. She did not serve in D.C., but she served in a different capacity. That influences me. She served internationally. So, um, how often do you travel down there in Olympia? Would you say? How often do you travel down there in oh, Olympia? Oh, I travel a lot of time. I have been down there with groups or with my mom and dad taking me. This was my ninth time going. Okay. So, so for someone who's never been in Olympia, how would you describe it? For someone who's never been in Olympia, I would say it can be traumatizing, overwhelming because of the crowds that are down there. Once you get used to it, you're fine. When you get down there, you're going to find your state, your Supreme Court, who's the ruler of everything. So if something goes through all the courts and they're the highest people they can go to, you're going to find your lawmakers. You're going to find 98 representatives and 49 senators down there that will make laws, change the RTW and tell you what it's about. You can sit there and watch the democratic process. By sitting there and watching the democratic process, you know what happens. They do, in other states, they don't allow it. But here, they allow you to watch the democratic process. So when did you start? Um, when did I start going to Olympia? Or when did you start having an interest in law? Oh, um, well, when my uncle, four years ago, decided he was going to retire. I decided to really pick it up because okay. he fought for my education. My education is very complex. I was in an IEP. For someone who doesn't know what an IEP is, Individual Education Plan. So um, do you want to talk about that? Individual well, education plan? I can give you a little bit of an example what that is. And the IEP means the individualized base, so they don't go what you're going to match. For credit example, I didn't have to have all the credit that were required to do what you were supposed to do. I could do different amount of credit. I could have all my learning assignments change. Everything else changed that was in it. Okay. So, um, in, has that changed? Do they have that now, the individual? Yes, they do. It's been rampant. Every state, I don't know how many states have it, but in Washington they have a big, they have a, a book that's probably this thick of laws. I can't even memorize one because they're so complex. What, do you know some of the steps to like passing a Oh, law? you have to request an IEP, has to go through the principal or vice principal. They have 30 days to respond. If they do not respond, then they can be held in court and contempt. That usually never happens. When you get an IEP team together, <coughs> a mix with a variety of people. Um, what are the kind of people do you encounter down in Olympia? Oh, you encounter everybody down there. State patrol, anything down there. You encounter everyone because they're down there wanting to make something change. If you're not down there to make something change, there's no purpose being down there. You're down there for a reason. Either meeting with the senator or representative, testifying in front of a bill, making something change. I have something with me if you guys like me to share with you. Yes, of course. I have a bill, House Bill 1240, that's very close to me. It is an isolation and restraint bill that passed down there last year uh, with the governor. And it is very, very well done. Uh, if we want to know how it was passed, 71 votes 
in favor in the House, 21 nays. In the Senate, it's 48 to none, meaning there was nobody excused. It was everybody in the Senate passed the bill. And signed by the House, the governor, the chief, and it becomes law 30 days after session is complete. Um, is there any way possible that people out there can participate and help? Oh, them? anybody can. Um, for instance, you can get on the phone and call, and you can tell the legislative hotline. I do not know what it is, but you can look it up online. It, everything is going to go as a www dot whatever it is, but at the ending of it, it's going to be L-E-G, meaning it's ledge, ledge, meaning it's going to be down there. It stands for, what does ledge stand for? Legislature. So if you hear something with L-E-G in it, it's going to mean you're doing something with the legislature. So, um, your, let's talk about your family. Um, okay, I can start with the Olympia part of that, and I had an uncle who served 24 years at the Mount Vernon legislature. He did everything in the education. Okay. So he reshaped your education. Your education is not, it's going to be way different than what it is 20 years from now, but he redid everything. For example, he did all the state testing that we have to take to graduate. He changed all that so it's not so complex. I don't know if you remember or you remember the state wassail yeah. when we were in elementary school. I remember that. Do you remember what that was? Yeah. No longer today. You, it is a state test that's done to graduate. There's many of them. Now they're trying to eliminate them. You, one of your senators that are in our district, do you know Senator John McCoy? No. He is a huge champion of getting rid of them. Well, Senator John McCoy has done has gotten rid of all of them, not all of them, but trying to make it so it's easy to graduate. Who wants to take 12 state tests to graduate? I know I don't. I know either one of you don't want to. So that what uh, my uncle did. Now I have an aunt who's international. She does international trade agreements. What are international trade agreements? We're working with different countries like France, Paris, Belgium, London, making trade agreements. Trade agreements it can be very complex. Um, I do not know why she was capacity four doors from the president, that's what she told me, but being there, I would think he would be under very heavy security watch. And in D.C. and Olympia, it's way different. You have Secret Service is in D.C. In Olympia, you have your Washington State Patrol, which is your highway patrol, protecting everybody. Okay. So, um... In the kind of business you do down in Olympia, is there any difficulties that you face? Oh, you can if you don't know what you're doing down there. The first time I went down there, I was never. I had no idea how to encounter somebody. Now I know. Come prepared with notes and knowing what you want to say because in the first two minutes, you make your impression. By not being down there and making, knowing what you're going to say, you can be sitting there basically wasting somebody's time when there's nothing really to say there. They're down there to change people's lives and make it a different in Washington State. Whether it comes to mental health or education, but I don't know if Marysville is aware that we are under a mandate right now called the McCleary decision. If you'd like me to explain that, I can a little bit. Yeah. What is McCleary? Well, in 2010, there was a group of parents called the McCleary went to the Supreme Court and told them, we do not have enough money for basic education, to f fully fund basic education. So the Supreme Court found it. So there was a law written, and in 2018, they have to have fully funded basic education. Well, uh, where we're at today is nowhere near it. They have until March, the end of this March, to prove something. Otherwise, they could be held sanctioned. For instance, they have a sanction right now of $100,000 a day. That's pretty big money. How would you like to be fined a day in person? Well, there's been a lot of talk. Uh, I don't think it really means a lot to Marysville, but it means that all the money is going into education. Well, we will be right back after this segment. So, what did you have for dinner? Well, I actually had McDonald's. 
Wow, that's really unhealthy. You should go get something that's healthy from the vending machine. Well, there's nothing healthy in the vending machine. We should go to the board and get healthier food in the vending machines. So I have a proposition of putting healthier food in the vending machines. I don't think that's a good idea. You're the only one that wants it. Well, then I can get more people to sign it. Do that, and we'll reconsider. OK. <laughs> so the board told me that I had to get more signatures. Well, we should start a petition. Here, you can be the first person to sign it. signatures. I got the signatures. Good job. I think we'll pass this. I'm Danielle. And this is Preston. So, um, what were we? Tell us more about what you were previously saying. The the, the law um, as a senator. Okay, I can tell you what a uh, lifespan down, while long you can serve down there consecutively. You can serve a four year term as a senator and two in the House. When that happens, every even number you're going to be voting for a primary, like this year, for instance, you're going to be voting for the new President of the United States. 2016 is an even number. Every odd number, you're going to be voting for like your city council, stuff like that. So um, enough about what you do down in Olympia. Um, let's talk about like your personal life. Like, what do you like? Well, when I'm not doing that, I love basketball. All you people know that basketball is one of my highest things. Uh, I have a cousin who is a Division two referee an ABA ref, which is an intramural basketball, one low, lower than the NBA, which is the National Basketball Association. And I love watching basketball because it's tied to my heart. I wish I could rep it, but at this time I cannot. It's something that should be played. It's the game is very well done. It's very interesting. If you don't know what it is, everybody should come watch it. And the other sports you enjoy watching? I do baseball, football. People say I can do football, basketball, or baseball because I can read lips. And somebody who's hearing impaired like me, reading lips means a world of a difference. So everybody tells me, you better cover your mouth, otherwise you're not going to be able to hear what the person's saying. So. What's your favorite team for baseball? Mariners. What's and your favorite team for football? Seahawks. Go Hawks. <laughs> what about basketball? Well, I don't know if any know, remember the Supersonics? My favorite player, Danny Fortune, because he always liked to get in trouble for hanging on the rim, baby. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, do you um, go and watch basketball games often? Yes. Yeah. Do you watch all of them or just some of them? I like any one of them. As long as it's a good game, you're getting good. High school is my favorite. Getcho has turned into a school where the style of play you have and the coaching you have. You're a high school coach. Corby Shu was my math teacher, so I've supported him all the way. I've done everything I can because he helped me graduate, so why not show him the respect? So I go to any high school game. I graduated from high school Pelchuk in 2010, so I've gone to everything. How was your high school days when you were at They were hard because we had to fight for everything. The district would not give us what you wanted. 
by not getting what you wanted, <coughs> you had to fight all the way from elementary, middle school, high school. So did your um, uncle help? Uh, he did him what he could with my mom with an IEP, but not that much because he was too busy in Olympia. Uh, back then, it was really, really difficult. Nowadays, the laws are getting harder, changing. To the super in, uh, public instruction, if I can think of one, public instruction, Randy Dorn, who's in charge of the whole thing, has made it really complex. So it's real hard to get what you want down there. Did you ever want to play basketball when you were at high school? Yes, I played, uh, I didn't play when I high school, I played Special Olympics, which is a level that kids that are not very good can play Special Olympics. If anybody has not done it and they're disabled or don't have a disability, it's free for anyone if you have an IEP or you're a married school citizen, I would suggest come playing. It's very well done. I did it for three years. Wasn't that my great, but I tried it. It's good to get out there sometimes. It is. You need your exercise. Maryville. You've got a great mayor, you've got great stuff, recreation. I've done an awful lot with this city, but right now I'm focused on education because every kid in the city of Marysville deserves a proper education to graduate. I agree. Um, is there any other laws um, that you would like to be passed? Um, yes, there is, not off the top of my head, but I can tell you what have they done in the last few years put money into education, and I have that with me if you'd like me to share that. Yeah. In the last three years, 33% more money has gone into the state budget. So overall, 48.8% of your state budget is education. When McCleary is passed in 2018, it will be over 50% of the budget will be education. Just think for a minute, what is 50% of your state budget? Every program you can think of being it. Yes. So, we'll be right back with another segment. Hello? Oh my god, this is the library. You guys need to shut up. How hard is it to keep quiet? Charger Chat. I'm your host, Josh. And I'm Danielle. And we're here with Preston. So tell us more about the laws you want to pass uh, for the education base. Uh, education, McClary. And why do I bring up McClary? Well, that's a real complex bill and will give more money for basic education. If you don't have no money, you don't get your basic education. Right. Paying for teachers, paying for supplies, paying for stuff like that. So, do you think, how long do you think you'll be in this? I will be there as long as I have to, to fight for whoever it is. I want to make sure every child, regardless, race, sex, gender, that you get what you need. By not, by doing that, it makes me feel I'm accomplished to everyone else around. Yeah. By being accomplished, you say, what have you done? You're not just sitting there and saying nothing. You're fighting for your peers. And that's what I've done. I've graduated, <coughs> but it means I don't need to sit in the corner and do nothing. I need to get out, help out. Change the world a little. Yes. Yeah, I feel it. So, what kind of struggles have you faced in this process? I faced a lot in my life because I was on an IEP. I had to learn the hard way. I'm right now learning the hard way still. I learn everything second on hand. By learning stuff on second, you guys are way ahead of me because I was a I was born hearing impaired, lost 83% of my hearing by losing 
you're hearing, it takes time to develop longer. You have to learn, listen, read, write. It takes two times longer to learn. So you've overcome these things, right? What'd you say? You've overcome these things? Yes, I have in many, many ways. Them. Many, many ways, and I'm very proud of myself where I'm at. And if I wouldn't have come, I wouldn't be doing this. Like public speaking, I'd love to speak in front of people and make a difference. Um, do you have any plans for the future at all? My plan, if I were to put a plan date for right now, I've done it in the past. I would love to serve in Olympia for everybody in the citizen of Marysville. I would put a 15 years from now, I'd be s like to be serving in Olympia and possibly serving in Washington, D.C. in 25, 30 years. Yeah, it allows me to do it. I'm not promising anybody, but that would be my goal, my biggest goal, would to be serving as a city council member here in the city of Marysville in five years. How are you striving to get to this goal? I push myself, learn more. You have to push yourself. If you're not pushing yourself, you're not learning. Um, what impact would you like to see out of all this? Uh, with like it all guides me back to education. Everything I do, fight for education. You don't fight for education, you go nowhere. So I'm fighting for education. Is there anything else you would want to fight for besides education? Uh, my next thing would be mental health or health care, because our health care system is horrible. But that's not my biggest priority. Do you feel like you've made an impact with helping with this education oh, law? I've made a huge impact. Yeah. Every time I go, everywhere I go, I've made an impact. Alright. So are you just trying to represent um, Marysville? Or yes. Are you trying to represent all of Washington? Also? Yes. Okay. Is there, any, is there another impact you would like to put on this world? Uh, if I were to do anything health care, but the biggest thing right now is education. Why do I keep bringing up the word education? Well, if you do not ready to go and learn in the 21st century, you're not going to get a job. Today, you have to have a college degree to get a job. Not like back in the 80s and 70s, you go to grad, you get a high school diploma, get a job. No, you have to go to college. Right now, our college system is broke getting high school students ready to move on. We're not ready to move on for the next generation. So we'll be right back with another segment. How many more? I think the last one. Right? Does anyone have any questions? No. Yeah, I have no idea what's going on. Oh my god, relationship goals! That is absolutely disgusting. Hey, Alyssa. Yeah. How are you doing today? Fantastic. So how do I look today? Yeah, you look fantastic. Um, just kidding, you look horrible. Wait, what? I was just trying to impress you. Bye, never mind. Um, the one that says, how, why did you agree to come onto this? Welcome back to Charger Chat. I'm your host, Josh. And I'm Danielle, and we're here with Preston. <coughs> so, Preston, is there anything else you wanted to share about? Well, first of all, you students have done a tremendous job. It takes a lot of pride to sit up here, obviously, live in the city of Marysville, talking about what you want. Something you need to do, you need to learn about your citizen. All your students in this room that are not up on the day, producer, people behind stage, thank them all. They're wonderful people. It's a wonderful thing to do. Tell marriage about what you're about. What you're doing is you're preparing yourself if you want to go into media. And what do I say? You're going to go into what you belong to. That's what your school is. Thank you, Principal. I would thank everybody who's worked on this show. It is a very complex show. 
and your biggest person you should thank is your teacher. If you did not have a teacher like you have today, none of your shows would be performed, none of them would be correct, and I don't care if that means you're doing a pre-record, you're making sure stuff is live and it's appropriate for the citizens of Marysville. TV3, thank you for all what you've done to make it so that not just me, but any person can sit up here and do an interview. And if anything else I'd like to say, Marysville, thanks for watching and thanks for listening to a person who will not stop advocating for education until the stuff is done. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm grateful this for this show too because in California I didn't I don't have anything like this back at my old school. It's completely different. It's just it's new <coughs> and it's exciting. Um I think it was a great idea to get um you on the show because Education is an important subject to talk about, and you like you clear you you explained it very clearly. Thank so you very much for having me on. Do you have um, any other messages for the Marysville community? Yeah, uh, I would say a shout out to the mayor. We have a wonderful mayor out there who's done everything for me. I was on his election campaign. I would say thank you, Mayor John Nering. If you're listening, anybody out there, superintendent, if you're listening to me. Thanks for listening and thanks for enjoying the show. So, all right. Thank you for watching. Thank you again for coming on to the show. We really appreciate it. No problem. Anything um, else you want to say? Yeah, it was a great idea to have him on the show, even though he seemed a little nervous about it. He did a great job. So, and thank you once again.